Hey guys, we are in the middle of London at Old Billingsgate for the Whiskey Show 2023. There are so many stands here, it is buzzing already. I'm not even sure where we're gonna go first, um, but we've got plenty of brands to catch up with, plenty of old friends to say hi to. There are so many Dream Drams, some of which between one and 10 tokens. There's some very, very special stuff here as always. What we're gonna do is go speak to a few people, film with a couple of people, see what we love, recommend two or three th different things to you, and probably feature at least one of those dream drams. So there's something really special that if you can ever look it out for it at a bar or an auction, you know what to go for. We're gonna go find one, have a dram, speak to a couple of people, and uh, see what's good and let you know. Hey guys, we are here at the Tora Vague stand. Tora Vague is the newest distillery on the Isle of Skye. Relatively new. In fact, it is my favorite of the new distilleries. And uh, I was just uh, with Neil a couple of days ago for the launch of the Oglion Cast Strength Edition. Neil, would you like to tell us a little bit more about this whiskey? Yes, what we've been doing is we've been looking at our whiskey stocks and uh, imagining to ourselves how the whiskey will grow through some age. Altlan is our uh, first expression that has had uh, more than a few casks blended into it. We've actually made around about 150,000 bottles of it, which for a small distillery is quite a lot. And I thought as we get past our bourbon imaged uh, young whiskey, I thought I would do a cast strength to, to finalize it, to finish it off, to say goodbye to it. Yeah. So this one's been bottled at 61.1%. That's right. We cast at 63.5 for this uh, batch. So it's only managed to lose about 2% in the five years it's been in cast. And this one is a blend of uh, bourbon cast and refill bourbon cast. Yeah. And it's lovely. There's, um, it is very different to the 46% as well. It's not just that same whiskey, but amped up with a higher ABV. Um, I love it. it, it doesn't taste like a five-year-old whiskey. Um, there is, there's a layer of flavor to it and a depth of flavor and none of those kind of youthful notes that you might expect from a whiskey of this age. You know, the team have done a fantastic job and I think one of the things I really like about Torbeg is the transparency and also the experimentation that goes on as well. Well, we're quite keen, uh, especially with uh, the fact that we are a new distillery in an old building to tell everybody what we're doing. So therefore, we're very happy on the back labels to tell everybody that we are using a specific type of grain, a specific yeast, and what the fennels are, because the fennels can be a little bit misleading. Yeah. But for our cast strength here, I feel we have a more pronounced family identity. Uh, and that's not just because of the dilution from the water when we're uh, doing a reduction. I think it's actually come through in a slightly rounder, slightly sweeter way. Yes, I'd agree with that. And it's certainly not perhaps like a big, punchy, like Isla whiskey that you might expect. The peat is certainly a little bit, you know, you, you know it's a peated whiskey, but it's a little bit more gentle than that. Um, can you give us any hints as to what's coming next? You said this is obviously the end of, end of the series. Well, l like a lot of uh, young, young distilleries, we start with a core cask expression, and that core cask expression for us is the bourbon cask, which gives me a little bit of the oak spice, a little bit of the roundness that bourbon brings to it. So I think the next one we will uh, trial some uh, sherry casks. Uh, we've been seasoning our sherry casks uh, in Spain for now, and then I think that about five years old, we're beginning to get a little bit of our influence coming through in a way that I'm happy for other people to see. Nice. I'm not saying it's going to be a lot of sherry influence, but in the blending uh, room, we're currently discussing just how much gets in the way of the family style and how much we're enjoying the addition of it. Yeah. Also, for those of you who aren't aware, there's also the Pete Elite Club as well, where there's a couple of exclusive casks that come out every year. And the first one of those was a PX cast, and I was lucky enough to get to try that. And I think that actually shows how sherry and peat, how kind of sweet and peat really works nicely together. So I think that's definitely something to look forward to. So um, thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. It was brilliant. Cheers. So 
Okay, this is a cask so sample cast. of a Glen yeah, Cadden Madeira cask. Sure. So it's not ready it's yet. So it's not something that you can buy. This is one of the great things about coming to a whiskey show, right? But there are brand ambassadors here that have pulled things out of their cupboards, out of their blending rooms, cask samples. And if you're lucky, you, you know, you get a bit of rapport, you have a chat. You can just try something that is not going to be on the shops for goodness knows how long. And this is a kind of deeper, darker Glen Cadden. Not quite as much, perhaps, as some of the PX casks they've got out there. Um, but it's really interesting. Uh, and whilst it might not be ready yet, as uh, in the, what, well, mighty brand ambassador now, um, Castilla has said, it's something that actually I think is probably most of the way there. Madeira can get quite tannic if you leave stuff in it for a long time. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be interested to see how this one goes. I'm here on the Glen Allerkey stand with Andrew, and we're going to talk a little bit about Mikkel Tor. Perfectly the, pronounced, yeah. Perfect. Got there in the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, it's the latest release from Glen Allerkey. It's spirit that has been matured and looked after, distilled from day one by Billy, uh, the master blender. And um, it's got a five-year-old H statement on. There's four different releases that have literally just come out. I'm trying it for the first time. I've got the chinky pin in my glass. Andrew, you want to tell me a little bit more about it? Yeah, so, um, I mean, Miko Tor, it was released just Tuesday of this week, so it's been great to bring it down to London to the, to the Whiskey Exchange show to kind of showcase it to the public for the first time, which has been awesome. Um, yeah, the guys at the facility, Billy and the rest of the whole production team, the, the guys in the sales, the guys in the warehouse have been working on this, yeah, for the last kind of five years, which has been awesome. It's been great to kind of showcase this for the first time. Um, we've released it with four different, uh, so four different batches, as you like, using different cask type, which is what Billy Walker is kind of known for um, and recognized for. This one that we're trying is it's called the Chingpin one. It's a very simple name. It's uh, five years old. It's been matured for about two and a half years in ex bourbon, and then finished off in Chingpin Virgin Oak, which is a so genus of, uh, of Virgin Oak found in kind of Missouri and other parts of America. Um, and it gives it a slight uh, sweet yet spicy, um, spicy note, spicy flavors. Um, and using the PPM, it's 35, which, as I was just saying, is the the peat that's actually and the phenols that's actually in the glass, in the bottle. Um, the actual phenol count in the malt itself was probably about 80, above 80, but obviously during the whole production and maturation cycle, it decreases. Um, so yeah, this is what we have. We use peat from St. Fergus, which is mainland peat from the northeast of Scotland. Um, so it's slightly different to your kind of Isla peat. It's almost yeah, less intense, yeah. but a little bit less uh, medicinal, which is, uh, which is great, and we're very proud to kind of showcase it and uh, yeah, bring it to the market for the first time beer. Yeah. So. That's really interesting because you you get some of the peat on the nose, and then actually on the palate to start with, it's much perhaps softer than the nose would expect. But then some of those kind of uh, bonfire embers kind of really yeah. come through nicely on the finish. Yeah, so um, it's almost like it's a gentle kind of bonfire this malt taste, which again, a lot of people with so peated uh, single malts, they almost get almost afraid and think it's going to kind of jump, so jump away at them and jump in their face. But this is much more gentle, kind of laid back. So, and again, for five years, you know, this tastes much more mature. I think than the five years old. Obviously, you know, Billy has massively, you know, reduced production. Right, the fermentation times have gone massively up. So I guess it's, you know, it's starting to see that kind of like additional kind of fruitiness that you would expect. Yeah, exactly. With the, I mean, with the, uh, this is our first kind of main release that we've used that. Billy and the whole distillery have had full usage of from start to finish. Um, so that's your 160 hour fermentation, uh, increased distillation time, increased mash time. So we're trying to do our best and give the, the whiskey the spare as good a as good a life as possible from start to finish using the best quality casks um, and just yeah having a great attention to detail from start to finish. I am here with Greg, who is the master distiller at Avalau. And we're going to talk a little bit about the new release, which is the um, well, re release, I guess, the new release of the Avalau 18. Do you want to tell us a little bit why it's different, why it's new, what's, what's changed about the Absolutely. Yeah, so we've always prided ourselves at Avalau on double cast maturation. And the 18 year old actually stacked up in that front. 
but to try and elevate the profile that I'm a little 18 year old who's now finished this product in double sherry. I say double sherry, they're talking about PX casts and all the also sherry casts. Just to elevate that immense flavour that you expect from an Abelow or sherry mature whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. Back in a 700ml bottle as well, which is a good thing as well in my book. Yeah, absolutely. So, punters are getting more for their money, more volume in there, and it's it's a bottle at 43 percent ABV, yeah. so yeah, really, really good. It's great whiskey. Amazing dark whiskey. I was lucky enough to try this back at the Whiskey Fringe with Johnny a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely fantastic. I think actually when it came to the Royal Mile Whiskey's boat, and that came second of all the whiskeys that they had there. So really, clearly people are enjoying it as a whiskey as well. Um, what else can we expect from Avalon? Is there anything else coming up? Anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, so Abalour, exciting times at Abalour Distillery. We're just about to revamp the distillery, build a new distillery. We're currently producing 3.8 million litres a year. Uh, we're going to revamp the distillery and elevate that uh, distillation production up to 8 million litres. Um, whilst mapping out our sustainability and responsibility targets for permanent recarb, making us more energy efficient, saving water, but still producing a fantastic Scotch whiskey. Amazing. I think, you know, people talking about sustainability. I was at an event a couple of days ago. It's becoming an increasingly big thing in whiskey. It's obviously great that you're looking at the kind of environmental aspects of producing whiskey as well as just flavor as well. So that's, that's great to hear. I, that's something that people are increasingly kind of interested about, but people are increasingly passionate about as well, right? Absolutely. Um, we've got to safeguard this industry. I'm here, I'm a, I'm a gatekeeper for Abelour in this generation, but we want Abelour to be here for generations to come. And the only way we can do that is making our whiskey responsibly, looking after natural water sources, all the raw materials, just making sure they're grown responsibly. And yeah, look forward to having more Abelour in years, generations to come. Thank you, Brian. Great stuff. Appreciate it, appreciate your time. Yeah. Cheers. I'm here with Jason from the Old and Rare team at the Whiskey Exchange, and we're here to talk about the three show bottlings we got. Jason, what's available this time? Yeah, so this year around, we've started with a Klein Leash 12 year old. Um, again, bottled at 56.4%. Beautiful, waxy characters, apricots, orchard fruits. And something that so far tonight and today has been very, very successful amongst everyone. From there, we're going to move into the Highland Park 22 year old. For me, it's got that struck match character, which is just really exactly what I like in old school Highland Park, yeah. which I don't find today so much in the modern official bottling expressions. Uh, and again, that one gone down a complete treat. Uh, and then the final one here is the East London Liquor Company, four-year-old rye finished in, oh, it's actually matured in a first fill sherry barrel. So bottled at 62%, I believe it is, 62.1%. Again, this one's been a powerhouse. And for me, I get that almost like a burnt rubber character. It's quite interesting, actually. I found almost like plimsolls after a PE class, so <laughs> nice. without the funk. As always, there's some fantastic artwork behind them. Um, can you tell us any more about that? So the artwork this year, or the inspiration behind that is the theme of the show this year is the people that make the show. So you've got different people. Like yourself. One of them, I know I've been told I'm somewhere in the show where my headshots are everywhere. Um, still yet to find it, but I'll go around at some point to have a look. But yeah, it's, it's all about the people that make the show and you know, paying tribute to them. It's a beautiful concept, to be honest. So. Amazing. Klein Leash, really good. It's lovely. It's thick. Like I said, it's got that waxiness that, again, is perhaps not quite as common as you want in, in modern Klein Leash. Yeah, and Klein Leash, again, it's becoming harder and harder to find in independent bottlings. And with the likes of, obviously, Diageo and big companies not allowing you to buy their cars, it's uh, becoming it's, a different thing. It's named as well, which is also kind of increasingly yeah, uncommon. Yeah, it's being uh, kept off the record. So yeah. always fun like that. Yeah. And Orkney, I think we can probably guess it's a uh, slightly beated Orkney, yes. so it's not hard yeah, to yeah, guess yeah, yeah. the choice of two. Out of the two, yeah. And uh, I might have just now said what distillery it was. I just did you? I don't uh, know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll the see. One that, the one that doesn't begin with S. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's missing from the stand this year. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and East London. I mean, that's a new one for me. I know an incredible distiller, and again, the future in that distillery, from what I'm just experiencing today, is incredible, and so much big character and complexity in it, which, again. A lot of people loved, and at 62.1%, almost that same bottling strength as you know, Chichibus and everything at the moment. So, yeah, 
Really nice. nice. I mean, also we checked out with Billy earlier on a bunch of the exclusive bottlings that are here at the Whiskey Exchange. So I mean, combined with the show exclusive bottlings, there are probably what a good dozen or so yeah, expressions know. that you just can't get anywhere else. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah a lot of bottlings this year, and even we have a Kilhoman, we've got a Loch Loman, we've got a few different bits and pieces that are official bottling by the distilleries, but obviously done for the TWE so whiskey show this year. So. Yeah. Awesome. I was lucky enough to try the Orkney earlier with Jason. Again, it's a classic old school Highland Park. Comes highly recommended. Really good dram. So yeah, thank you thank for sharing you. that with me. No Pleasure. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers. What have I just had? So I think you can see by the look in my eyes, it's something a little bit special. It's a 1976 Tom and Tool, uh, bottled back in May 2021, and it had a seven-year-old finish in a port pipe. A bottle at 42.5%. Um, obviously, an exceptionally special whiskey. You don't see stuff like this on the market every day. Um, and quite unusual to see a whiskey of this age with a finish. But actually, I think it genuinely has elevated it. You've got that old-school freeziness of the bourbon. And then a very gentle, actually, finish in a refill port pipe. Um, you know, 814 bottles out of this, a couple of casks going into it. Um, the fruitiness of the port is, is really there. You can tell that it's been finished in a port cask, but at the same time, nor does it overpower the spirit, which is obviously being Tom and Tool as well, a very gentle spirit as well. Um, you know, this is one of the dream drams that's here at the whiskey uh, whiskey show this weekend. So thank you so much to Ian, the master blender, for sharing it. Um, this is the kind of thing that you come to a whiskey show to experience. It's just fantastic. You're not going to find this everywhere, and if you can, a bottle of it is obviously you're going to need deep pockets. So come to a whiskey show, try whiskey like this, have your mind blown. Jason, we've got something pretty special here. Tell us about Dream Drams and this so, whiskey in particular. So this year, one of the Dream Drams that's featured here on the Whiskey Show Bottlings is the 50-year-old uh, blended whiskey, Speyside blended whiskey, uh, done to commemorate my bosses, Sakinda Singh's 50th anniversary and his family's 50th anniversary in the industry. So again, a lot of those old school characters which we just now picked up upon. Yeah. Dusty books and, you know, again, orchard fruits. Incredible. Still 49.5% after know, 50 still. years and just incredible how it holds up. I think this one is one that goes under the radar because a lot of people look at blends and they think, you know, it's a blended whiskey, I don't want to approach it. What they forget is some of these old blends are predominantly mainly malt. Yep. And very little of it is grain, so it's... I mean, who knows with this one as well, quite a few of them also blended at birth, right? It was straight into the cask and they've effectively been marrying for that entire 50 year period. Um, regardless of whatever happens with this one, it's delicious. It's a stunning whistle. Um, just delightfully old school from the nose onwards, yeah. right? Yeah, and this is what whiskey should be about, enjoying something, good friends, and then at the same time, great liquid. Yeah. It makes it all that more special. So much rancio, a lot of waxiness, like old beeswax. Yeah. Beehive built on old books. Yes. That, yeah, that dustiness that, again, you can only really get from a kind of a really well-matured whiskey. Or well, it reminds um, me of this, even the Dunnage warehouses where you get that musty character from the earth. Yeah. And, you know, I'll say it once, I'll say it a million times. This is why you come to whiskey shows. Whiskeys that, you know, you can... Sometimes you just can't try these anyway because then they're, they're not simply available anymore. They're old, they've been sold out. You'd be paying a premium auction or, you know, stuff like this. Most people cannot afford to spend this amount on a bottle of whiskey, but you can come here, you get a token included as part of the price. You'd be silly not to. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jason. No, Appreciate cheers. it. Sanji Bar. Sanji. It's kick out time of the Whiskey Exchange Show for 2023. These are the last lot of people. We're probably going to be pushed out in just a minute. It's a fantastic time. It's a fantastic show. Pretty much every brand is here. We've been here for five, six hours and we have not seen half of it. So I'm really sorry if there's a brand that we know and we love that we've not seen you today. Um, we'll see you next year. Um, we could just do the one day today. Look, 
so many fantastic whiskies. It's almost too difficult to name. Incredible Dream Drams as well. I think from my perspective, probably the 1976 Port Cask from Tom and Tool has to be my favorite. Again, it was one of the Dream Drams. So thank you to Ian, the master distiller there for sharing it. It's fantastic. Honestly, get yourself to a whiskey show. It is one of the best pieces of advice I can give you wherever you are in the industry, whether you're just starting out or whether you're an expert. There's always something you can learn, always something new to taste. Come on down. Cheers, guys. See you next time.